American Trail. Chapter 8. On to Monterey. August 25th, 1843. Utah Territory. Red, yellow, blue cliffs rise up on all sides. Sunset, fierce, barbaric, hostile. The man is Captain John Fremont. The government wants a route survey that will connect the United States with the Oregon country. Fremont is the man for the job. Four months ago, he left Kansas. He is west of the Rocky Mountains now. Fifteen men with him. One howitzer gun. And a hunter named Carson. You working on that diary, Captain? Yes, I'll need these notes when I get back to Washington. I sort of keep thinking about Broken Hand Fitzpatrick. <laughs> He's all right, Carson. Uh, maybe we should have all stayed together. Uh, by the time we get to the Oregon country, Broken Hand will be there waiting for us. He'll most likely get to Fort Hall before we do. That was no coyote, Captain. Indians? Johnson, what is it? I, I ain't sure, sir. You see something? I, I just ain't sure, Captain Fremont. I'll take a look around, Captain. I'll uh, get some sleep. Indians won't attack if they know we're on the watch for them. September 8th, one week south of Soda Springs, searching for the Great Salt Lake. Something else, something I can't even talk to Carson about, not yet. Our final destination should be the Columbia River. The job will be done, yet, yet I know I must go on from there. Yeah, that can wait. Our party's even smaller. I've sent some men on the Fort Hall for supplies. The rest of us are in marshlands surrounded by mountains. Real salty around here, Captain. Yeah, I'm breathing it. I feel it in my stomach. Makes you kind of thirsty. Hey, Carson, your face is covered with salt. You better wipe it off. Marshlands glisten with salt. Ridden to higher ground. An ocean. An ocean in the middle of the desert. All the way to the horizon. Further than you can see. The great salt lake. Hey, them islands out there. Look at them islands. Tropical jungle islands. You reckon anything lives on? Animals. Carson, tomorrow we'll take the proper boat out. We'll explore the lake. The islands. Captain, it's a real good thing there's only four of us in this here boat. Huh? It sprung half a dozen leaks. Carson, something wrong, Captain? The island. You see anything on it? Carson, take these glasses. Have a look. Captain, I don't see nothing but a rock. No trees, no... Nothing at all. Just barren rock. Nothing but rock. <laughs> Indians tonight. In the morning, I can drop. 
draw a map of the lake so that I can see it from here. Then we'll push on to Fort Hall. September 15th, Oregon Trail. The men I sent on to Fort Hall have returned. Broken Hand Fitzpatrick is with him. Captain, my boy, we couldn't bring much food. Food's a scarce commodity up at Fort Hall. Well, how's that? Well, it's the settlers moving into the Oregon country. They're just about cleaned up all the food at the fort. Hey, you reckon we can get enough to see us to the Columbia River, Broken Hand? That's quite a problem, Kit. Well, we don't all have to go to the Columbia. I, I think we can send some of the men home, as a matter of fact. October 28th. We are camped beside the Dallas of the Columbia River. Rock walls overlook deep, dark whirlpools. No sound, no foam, no ripple. An accurate map has been charted from Kansas to the Oregon country. Still the dream I have had for many weeks stays with me. Of the great unknown country to the south of here. Now, what are you thinking about, Captain? Hmm? I, I was thinking of uh, somewhere in the Sierra Nevada. Sierra Nevada? The Buenaventura River. Hey, Captain, you ain't got no idea. The river's never been surveyed. But, but Captain... No one's even sure where it is. Well, it's on maps. Yeah, but every map is different. Captain, we wouldn't have food enough. Ah, oh, buffalo, dear. We'd find food and travel light. Well, winter's coming. We'll be in the river country before then. Blows through a valley, mild climate even in winter. I ought to have my skull examined for even listening Travel to you. light, you said, Captain. We'll leave the heavy equipment. Oh, what about the howitzer gun, Captain? We'll take that. December 10th. Excitement at the prospect of locating the Buenaventura. We're pushing through hill country where no white men have ever been before. The Indians seem hostile everywhere, smoke signals. We've hauled it. We'll stand precious little chance that we're attacked. Eh, if we could discourage them. Well, they might be kind of hard to discourage, Captain. They're, they're coming. Look. Down that hill, Captain. See them? Unhitch the howitzer. They're loaded. Hurry up. The howitzer, say glory. Yeah. Unhitch the mule from the gun. Now can help me. Broken hand. Load the howitzer. Don't you want ready, Captain? Uh, this fails. Get ready to fight. Fire! It stopped them. Captain, me boy, they're running for their lives. Captain, this is the first time I ever took a lag into that air gun. <laughs> January 3rd. We move across Black Rock, desert land. Heavy fog. And the cold. Sure can't see more than a few yards in any direction, Captain. Well, at least we're hidden from the Indians. January 15th. Pine Forest. We must be coming to the Buenaventura River. Carson has gone ahead looking for beaver signs. That'll tell us we're close to a river flowing seaward. All the men are looking forward to seeing the river. It'll be a moment of triumph for all of us. January 16th. The river must be at hand. Not in one ravine or valley, then in the next. We're, we're close by. January 17th. The river's somewhere in this country. We've tried all directions in the, in the next ravine, perhaps, or, or the next. January 18th. Where is it? No sign of the river. No sign of beaver tracks to indicate where it could be. Where is it? There is no Buenaventura. Another legend. Another legend like the jungle islands in the Salt Lake. Oh, these fools. We who... might have missed the river. No, it doesn't exist. I reckon we came a long way for nothing. I wouldn't say that. We found there's no such river. Now we know. What now? Now, we're low on food. 
We can't go back. We've come too far. We're camping California, just on the other side of these mountains. Yeah, it's late in the year, but hey, we can try. If, if we can find a pass. We must find a pass, Captain. All right, we turn off. We'll try to cross the Sierras. We have no choice. Mountains, nine to fifteen thousand feet high. I keep a record of the days. We've shot a few birds, but today we see no sign of any. Silence. The moaning silence of the Sierra Nevada. Snow, hundred feet deep in places. The gun has been left behind. We go on, on, hunger, hunger and frozen bodies, starvation is very near. Now, what? One of the men <laughs> stared. Captain uh, Fremont, snow so soft, comfortable. Yeah. Let me sleep. Let me sleep. Later now, later. No, no, no. I'm hungry, Captain. Just sleep. I won't, I won't care so much. Give me food. Give me food. I want food. We better strap him to his saddle, Captain. All right. Help me. Well, oh, no. Let me stay. <laughs> We've eaten most of our clothing. Leather jackets. Footgear. Half naked now, living skeletons, frozen. And we stare at each other, looking for signs of madness. We stumble or stand still. How much can men stand, dear God? How much more? Captain. Yeah. You see something, Captain? I thought I saw something. Uh, uh, Carson, there, there is something. Some huts. People. wilderness, a tiny village, friendly Indians, employed by a white man named Sutter. On March 6th, Fremont made his way into Sutter's fort in the Sacramento Valley. For the first time, an accurate survey had been made of the country from Kansas to Oregon, from the Columbia down through the Sierras into California. As America entered yet another era of expansion, new states grew up in the great mountain regions as the covered wagons rolled westward, ever westward, on to Monterey. This has been the eighth chapter in the story of the American nation. Brought to you by the Ladies Auxiliary to the Veterans of Foreign Wars. Next week, another story to make you proud of this great country of ours as we follow the American Trail.